Hi everybody! So it has been a long time coming. Um, I am doing my, not only my labor and delivery story right now, but I'm also filming Sawyer and my one month update. What? It has already been a month. So, um, this video is going to be my labor and delivery video. I'm not going to get too much in depth because I've tried to film this uh, probably once already and um, it didn't it didn't uh, go very well it ended up being like 30 minutes long so I am going to go very quickly through what had happened so on April 29th um, I had my doctor's appointment like any other day it was my last NST because my doctor had ordered four so we had gone to my NST and it was like normal she hooked me up and we sat there for 20 minutes. Um, so when she came back in after she was, or after I was done, she looked at it and he had had some variables, which is um, heart rate dips. So she called my doctor and my doctor was, they're in the same building, so he was right upstairs. We were downstairs. And he had said, go ahead and do um, a biophysical profile, which is just an ultrasound. Um, and it checks fluid level, their movement, and practicing breathing. So... Um, we went back into the waiting room, waited for my ultrasound, went in. Um, it took them a while to get him to practice breathing. They had to catch it, and he was in a weird position. Um, and his movements were fine. And they looked at his fluid level, and basically there was barely any fluid left. So they sent me back upstairs because um, I had a doctor's appointment at 2.30. By this time, it was like 3 o'clock. So you're starting to wake up. <laughs> By this time, it was 3 o'clock. And um, I got called back. And the nurse, I love the nurse, she was like, so I heard your fluid level was low. Maybe you'll get induced today. And I was like, that would be amazing. Because <laughs> so, I had been upset. I think I had mentioned in my update video that day, or the day before, that I had been having a hard time. I had been in tears the, all the time and I was very um, upset because I was in so much pain and it got to the point where I was kind of resenting Sawyer and I was, I, the depression, postpartum depression usually doesn't set in until obviously you're postpartum. So an, antipartum, antipartum, I was starting to get depressed. And I basically told my mom, I was like, I hate Sawyer. I got to the point where I was like, I can't stand him because of the pain that was being caused by the pregnancy, which obviously was not his fault. So we get into the room and my doctor comes in and he was like, well, what did they tell you about the um, NST? And I was like, well, they said that my fluid level was low. And he was like, yeah. He's like, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to induce today. And I was like, what? What do you mean today? And I was like, I could just kiss you right now. And it was good because I had brought my camera bag that day. I was like, maybe I should bring it. So I brought my camera bag that day. I brought my hospital bag. I had brought it every um, time, but I had brought my camera bag, which I hadn't brought any other time. So um, we stopped to get my mom some food, and then we headed up to the hospital. So we got up to the hospital. They hooked me up. It took four people to get my IV in. And then the doctors came in and talked to me about the game plan. So what they were going to do is put me on miso. That's what they called it. They shortened it. But I remember what it was called. But it was basically to ripen my cervix. Because at 39 weeks, I was... 39 weeks in one day, I was still... Um, my cervix was really long. And I was still closed. So they needed to ripen my cervix so they could open it. Um, so they gave me the miso at 8 o'clock because they let me eat dinner. I couldn't eat while I was on it. So they let me eat dinner, order dinner and eat it. And then they started it at around 8 o'clock. So I got, I could get four doses of it. So we started at 8 o'clock. So then the next day, all of Thursday, um, I was still on it. My doctor came to visit me Thursday morning. He walked in and he was like, you're still pregnant? And I was like, yeah. So, um, they kept me on it all of Thursday. So by the end of Thursday, uh, we had gotten ready to do the Foley bulb, which if you don't want to know what a Foley bulb is, once you're dilated to whatever, I was dilated to a one at that point. Um, they stick a catheter up into your cervix with a little balloon on the end and they fill the balloon with some liquid. Um, and it basically puts pressure on your cervix to 
force it to dilate because his head wasn't against my cervix forcing it to um uh to dilate so they did that and you know the first doctor that i had the resident i hated her she made the foley bulb sound like it was torturous and i had a conversation with her where i was like i don't want to do it um so a new doctor came in because they had switched um the staff switch was happening and i got this wonderful doctor loved her and she explained it, the procedure all over again. And I was like, that's it? I was like, why didn't they explain it to me like that before? So what had happened was she gave me some pain medication before they did it because she was like, it might be a little uncomfortable. And I'm glad she did. It was a medication that made me really loopy. Like the room started to spin and I got tired. But it was a really good medication because he's starting to stir. Um, she had She had the speculum. They used the speculum to do it. Um, and she couldn't get it positioned right. My cervix wouldn't pop out like they wanted it to. So she had to constantly be moving the speculum and taking it out, putting it back in, and trying to get it. So it was good that they gave me the pain medication. So they got the Foley bulb in, and she was like, when it comes out, you should be three and a half centimeters. Um, so I was like, okay. So then a little while later, I'd taken a nap. Um, my godmother and my mom were there, and they were taking naps too, and we were just kind of waiting. And I went to the bathroom, and it came out. And I was like, wow, three and a half. We're good to go. She checked. Oh, and they were doing Pitocin at that time, too. They checked, and I was only a two. And she was like, I think because your cervix wasn't popping out like we wanted it to, it didn't get in all the way. So once again, they put in a second one. So I had my second Foley ball put in, and they still had the Pitocin going. And by that time, I think it was, I don't remember what time it was. Maybe it was 3 o'clock in the morning something like that and my nurse asked me if I wanted an epidural and I was like yes so the anesthesiologist comes in and he I was doing good at this point um I was just getting uncomfortable and I was like you know what if I'm gonna be in labor for a, a while longer I might as well get some rest and some pain relief to do that because I was only at a two at that point point. and we were over 24 hours in oh maybe I should go get him <laughs> But anyway, um, we were over 24 hours in. So then we, they started the Pitocin again. I asked for my epidural. The anesthesiologist came in and he went to put in my epidural. He gave me the numbing medication in my back, which, oh, that kind of hurt. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It hurt. Um, it like zinged on my back and I was like, I jumped. And so he went to go put the epidural in the first time. Didn't numb me enough. So he was trying to put the epidural in without n numbing medication burst into tears it was awful um so then he numbed me up a lot more and he put it in and then they test it to make sure it's not near any blood vessels the first time he put it in it was near blood vessels so we had to take it out and put it in again so we put it in the second time and it was perfect so then it took effect and it was so weird that I couldn't like move it was like awful but it was really nice because I got some rest um so this was the morning the night of the 30th into May 1st so then the next morning well throughout the night they kept having to shut off the Pitocin because Sawyer's heart rate would dip again so they would give him a break start it again and it would happen again so then they would t turn it off again and then they would have to build it back up each time so in the morning my doctor came in they had to shut it off for a little while um and he came in and he was like okay so here's what's gonna happen you are going to have a baby today whether it's naturally or if it's c-section so i'm gonna give you until five o'clock at night five to six o'clock at night um to uh and decide from there what's gonna go on so he left the room and they turned the pitocin on again little did i know he was in the nurse's station watching my monitor so um i asked them to turn down the the heart rate monitor that was tracking Sawyer because I could hear when it dipped um and I didn't like that so I was like they're watching him they're keeping an eye on him so I don't need to hear I don't need to stress out so um 10 to 15 minutes later they come back in and they're like all right we booked the OR you're gonna have a c-section and I was like all right and at this point, I was so over the induction. I was like, roll me down right now. Let's go. And 
so the anesthesiologist came in, they talked to me about my options of pain relief. And since I already had my epidural and they were like, we're just going to put the numbing medication in your epidural. We're just going to numb you up really, really good. And I was like, okay. So they tested my epidural and how, what I could feel. And they were like, that's perfect. That, perfect. So they put on my um, cap and they rolled me down. And so I got on the operating table and at this time my mom was getting dressed and they were, she was waiting for them to get me on the table and all numbed up. And they were putting the medication in my epidural and I could feel it in the little tube. It was really cool. You could feel the coolness in the tube. And they were testing the epidural and my doctor and the resident were feeling around to see where Sawyer was positioned. Um, so I was laying there, they'd strapped my arms down, they put the leg cuffs on to make sure that my blood kept circulating in my legs. They had the, um, blood pressure cuff on, they had, like, heart monitors on, the finger monitor on. And so I was just laying there, and I had gotten sleepy. Um, and I think my body was just exhausted. So, um, I had kind of closed my eyes, and my doctor, he has such a good sense of humor. He was sitting near me, and he's like, are you doing okay? And I was like, yeah. And I was just really tired, so my eyes were closed the whole time. And he goes... I only got to chapter three on the book of how to do a C-section. He goes, so I may not be able to close you up. And I was like, all right, if I'm, as long as I have my arms and legs, I'm good. So, um, before I'd gotten on the operating table, they gave me this really sour stuff. It was supposed to be an antacid, but I'm sorry, but antacids aren't supposed to be sour. I don't know what it was, but I, I drank it. Um, so I got on the table and everything was good. They tested after they had given me the medicine, they tested my side to make sure that I couldn't feel anything. And, um, so then the surgery started. My mom was next to me, um, and I slept pretty much through the whole surgery. I woke up to puke a couple times. I puked on the operating table. Um, and we had gotten into the OR around 10 o'clock, right before 10. Um, and at 10.37 in the morning, Sawyer was born. They actually had trouble, um taking him out because he was like stuck somehow right before we went down I noticed that his foot was in my ribs and his feet have never been in my ribs and uh they had to use forceps to get him out like they had to force him out it took a long time he had like marks on his head from um the forceps trying to get him out he had like a scratch right here from the forceps um and oh I forgot to mention my doctor tried to break my water too and nothing came out forgot to mention that um, he had like a little bit on his hands, but that was it. Um, ooh, he's starting to stir. So he was born at 1037 AM on May 1st. So his birthday is 5115. So it's the same backwards and frontwards, um, which was one of the dates that I said would be cool for him to be born on. It was either 5115 or 51515 that I liked, um, or my birthday or 5515. Anyway, um, so he was seven pounds even. He was a tiny little guy. Um, and he was 20 and a half inches long. Um, so he was tiny. He still fits a new newborn even at a month old. Um, I'm trying to think. He has dark brown hair. It's starting to lighten, but when he was born, he had dark brown hair. And his eyes were a very light blue. Um now they've darkened and they're like a darker blue they switch from blue to gray um but i don't see them going to brown like mine so i was really excited about that i got my blue eyed dark haired baby um and he's not dark like me he's not light like his dad he's like an olive skin tone he's like right in the middle like i wanted um and yeah he is he was just a precious precious baby so yeah that was my birth story um it went perfectly i didn't really have any expectations i didn't have a preference of natural birthing a vaginal birth over a cesarean I was okay with either as long as we came, both came out healthy and happy and we both did um so that's all I could have ever asked for so they stitched me back up and I went into recovery and it was great um but yeah so um he's starting to stir and I still have to film his one month update so I'm going to try to have him in his one month update but thank you guys so much for watching thank you for all of the support during my pregnancy um I'm trying to decide how often I want him on this channel um just due to privacy issues um and I'll talk about that in his one month update but thank you guys so much for all of the support and well wishes and congratulations on Facebook because the people who are following me on Facebook got all of the updates the day he was born and while I was in labor. Um, 
but obviously it takes a while to edit videos and film them and get them up so um like i said thank you um i really appreciate all the support and we will see you guys in his one month update bye